Hello and welcome to another flipped classroom lesson. This one is on the uh, origin of the equations of motion. Where did they come from? Uh, in the last video I told you to accept them because I am an authority figure and you will obey. Um, and that's actually a terrible reason to believe anything. There are loads of authority figures who do not have the first clue what they are talking about and spout all kinds of nonsense. So let let me show you why you should in fact believe these equations of motion. Here they are uh, to review. And again, if you want, I've got this whole presentation up on the LMS. Let's tackle the first one. Um, let's suppose that you've got a car going down the road and it's initially going at four meters per second and it's accelerating at a rate of two meters per second squared. Uh, so at time zero, its velocity is four. Now, the acceleration is two meters per second squared, and that means that every second, its speed will increase by two meters per second. Uh, so you add two to the velocity for every second. So after one second, it's going at six meters per second. After two seconds, you add two more, it's going eight. Three seconds, we're up to 10. Four seconds, we're up to 12 meters per second. Now I want you to use your great powers of reasoning and figure out how fast this car should be going after 10 seconds. Pause the video if you like. Okay, if you guessed 24, you are correct. Uh, and I believe you got that by taking the acceleration, which is 2 meters per second squared, multiplying that by the time, which is 10 seconds, and then tacking on this initial velocity afterwards. And that is exactly what the equation says. Take acceleration, multiply by time, add the initial velocity, you get the final velocity. Congratulations, you've just derived the first equation. Let's go to the second one. We're going to derive this one graphically. Um, so this one tells us that the uh, distance covered equals the average velocity times the time. And I've put up a little sample graph of, of an accelerated motion, an initial velocity, a final velocity, and it reaches that final velocity after some time t. Now graphically, we can find the distance by figuring out the area under the curve. And in this case, you would find the area of this box underneath here, and you would add it to the area of this triangle. Uh, and if you did that here, the area of the box is vi times t, and the area of the triangle is 1 half base times height, which is the difference in velocities times time over 2. 2 is the base, the difference in velocities is the height. Okay, so far so good. Now, uh, there's another way to do this. If you don't like triangles, you can actually substitute the triangle with this box of half the height. So uh, it turns out if you take this little box, which is the height of the average velocity, yet yeah, we're getting to our equation, um, you add these two boxes together, VIT, and the average velocity um, uh, right here, you get the same thing as you got before. So these two, uh, these two boxes with average velocity is the same thing as this. And the key geometrical insight is that you take this little triangle right here, and if you rotate it and flip it in here, it fits perfectly. So the area is exactly the same. Um, now for the third equation of motion. Um, so this one can be derived algebraically from the first two. So if I, if I know those first two are correct, uh, I want to show the, uh, this third equation of motion is also true. What I can do is I can take this equation right here, uh, and for v where it says Vf right here, I can plug in Vi plus At, because I know that's the same thing as Vf. So I do that, and I plug it in right here, and then I start simplifying. Um, Vi plus Vi gives me 2Vi. Uh, then I can, uh, I've got two expressions on top, both divided by 2, so I just divide each one by 2. 2Vi two over 2 is just Vi. At over 2, I rewrite that as 1 half At. 
Now I've got this whole thing multiplied by time. I distribute time through, so I get x equals vit plus one half at squared, because t squared is just t times t, and I've got it. That's what I wanted to show. Now for the fourth equation, um, it's more algebra, uh, so you can either uh, do that yourself or you can look it up. All right, have a good day.